Good morning everybody, it's me, Summer Filler Grade 3, and for today's video I'm going to share with you the process of my painting Sunbeam. So here I actually ended up recording the thumbnail process, so I thought I'd share that with you. Uh, this piece is watercolor on wood, and I also used the Copic markers and Prismacolor Collier's colored pencils, as well as some Premier pencils. So if you want all the specifics of those supplies, please check the description box down below. This thumbnail here, my basic idea was a darker skinned girl in a bright yellow turtleneck with long flowing hair and some plants and glasses. I had seen a girl wearing a bright yellow turtleneck earlier that day and I don't know, just bright yellow turtlenecks. I'm down. I'm down for that trend. <laughs> so here I've got my 16 by 20 Blick canvas or uh, wooden canvas. This isn't primed or anything like a rebel, but um, I'm just sketching that out with the red collie race. I think that might be Tuscan red. I'll have to check the, the description box myself, but I wanted to make sure to have it pretty symmetrical, like, you know, to the point where it looks symmetrical in the drawing, and uh, I just, I'm just happy with it, because normally for a piece like this, I would tell myself that I can't do it until the next day, you know, you don't really have time, and I'm like, no, no, you thought of it, and now you can make it, and it's great. And I did, and I was really happy about it. One of the biggest things while working in watercolor, not even on wood, is that you have to make sure you mix enough of whatever color you're going to use. And because wood, I almost want to say you have to do it faster because it tends to leave a line if you allow it to dry at all <clears throat> between like brush strokes or what have you. It's incredibly important to have enough of your color mixed and that was something I learned very quickly here. Like. This line here, I had to pause to mix more, and, you know, it does end up blending out in the end, but you can kind of see where the two different ones were, and I do go over everything else to make it match. This is actually the biggest watercolor on wood piece I've ever done, and I definitely want to do more like this. I think I have another wooden canvas like this in the closet, so I think I'm gonna do something else. I'm so excited. And here I thought I'd show you some footage of me mixing the color for her skin on my giant palette that I got for Christmas. If you're interested in seeing what I got for Christmas, I will link my art supply haul up in the top corner. Starting here with the blush, it's easy to blend out with some watercolor uh, by actually just using a wet brush. It does tend to leave a bit more of a line, but I think that's kind of the like textury appeal of watercolor on wood. If you've never tried it, I highly recommend it. Only thing to watch out for is if you put a lot of water you know on the wood it goes into the cracks and crevices so like thin lines or something you kind of have to add back in after like her glasses as much as I try to stay around them it just bleeds in and that's okay because you can use opaque mediums on top for the hair I kind of wanted to go with a clumpy kind of uh, stripey sort of look like um, more designed rather than realistic so here I 
originally had sketched out like a very stripey kind of pattern and it just didn't read right. It didn't really read as hair so much as a pattern, which is something I was looking at, but here I'm painting it in. It's just too obvious. So I do end up going in and going over that and leaving me just with some texture. Originally I had planned to go in with those white areas, like a darker color, but going over it all like this worked a lot better than I thought it would. It still shows the texture that I wanted, but without it being stripey. In the center of the storm, we see blue sky. Now these leaves back here, I don't believe are something I've drawn on this channel before, but these are monstera leaves, and they are a type of indoor house plant that a lot of uh, succulent lovers also really like, myself included. I actually had a monstera leaf that I got last summer, and it ended, it, you know, it wilted and died, but because it was cut. But monstera is some of the coolest, it's like leaf shape. So if you have the chance, I would highly suggest looking up Monstera and just being impressed because it's so cool looking. I wanted to make sure it looked like this, you know, really cool chick is sitting in maybe some cool house with plants or in a greenhouse and just give off that kind of cool relaxed vibe. Here going in on the glasses, I wanted to make them a color similar to like, uh, like a lightish kind of a wine color. And let me tell you, doing those lips was terrifying, because with wood you can't really wipe up any mistakes. Like, you can try, but it's kind of stained if you put anything down, so I was so afraid I would do them too dark. Then just going in and adding more shading. Originally I was not going to do any shading on the yellow turtleneck, and it was going to be more of like a graphic shape, but I'm so glad I did. I ended up going in and adding more detail, and I'm really happy with it and I think I want to do more clothing detail like this in the future. Now for the background I'm mixing up a light gray color and fair warning when you paint on wood it does darken the wood a lot more than it will actually be when it's dry so it does dry back quite a bit and this background here I like this color but of course it did dry and you can already see it up by the leaves starting to turn into that cool gray that I actually mixed. It's a little deceptive at first, but once you get the hang of it, you can get some really interesting results. Now for the turtleneck, I mixed up a darker, brighter yellow, and now I'm going in and adding the sweater texture over the entire thing, while keeping in mind the way the fabric is flowing and making it look like there's actually volume in there. Considering I couldn't touch the board that much because parts of it were wet, I feel like I did pretty good and like some of the wobbliness of the lines makes it look even more like fabric, like it has that like kind of squishy kind of fabric look to it and I'm really happy with it. <laughs> I want to paint lots of girls in sweaters now. For the leaves, I wanted to take advantage of the woods kind of blending when you uh, bleeding and blending sort of a thing. When you add water, it kind of all bleeds out. So here I'm just using regular water, clean water, and brushing it on, and then while it's still wet, putting in my shadows, and they're blending out and feathering nicely, so I have smooth shading. And I'm so happy this worked. It was a really great chance for me to try it out, because I've been thinking about it as I was working, and I can't wait to try it again on more detailed areas, like this for the skin or doing blush, oh, I can't wait.
for the eyes, I wanted to make sure that they stood out against the background and all of the detail that was going into the piece. So I went a bit darker than I thought I was going to. This is using the most Viridian color in my Magellos, and as it's still wet, I'm adding in the shading and different colors to do the pupils. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I feel like the eyes are usually one of the last things I remember exist. <laughs> I'm like, at the end of the piece, I'm like, oh, I guess she kind of needs eye color. And working at this bigger scale really allowed me to get more detail, especially doing like the eyeliner here and getting in the eyelashes and just everything like that. It was, it was really nice. I think I really like this scale. <laughs> Working on the face here, I decided to work really slowly and just make sure that everything was in its place. I mean, after I spent so much time on this, I did not want to mess it up now. <laughs> Adding shadows can be a little scary here too because I put that in and it was, seems so dark, but it does dry back quite a bit. I am working on opening my Store Envy shop. I'm still in the process of setting it up, but when it does open, I think I'm going to list this original for sale. So if you'd like to call dibs on it, let me know, send me a DM on Instagram or what have you. But I'm listing a whole bunch of originals and illustrations and paintings. So yeah, if there's anything in particular that you want to claim before we open, let me know. But other than that, I'm really, really excited for it. Moving on to more sweater details, because it took so long! Here I decided that the leaves were near a wall, like just above it, so I added in the shadows for that, like the flash of the cameras going off, you know, like poof, and like, you know, it shows up on the wall. Felt like it just adds kind of a graphic element that I had kind of eliminated other than like the textured hair but I feel like it kind of brings it back. I also really worked on kind of uh, incorporating a complementary color scheme here or not a color scheme but you know what I mean like uh, I wanted to make sure to use lots of purple in the shadows to contrast with her yellow sweater. And I feel like it really did end up working because it makes the shadows and a form in her face stand out a lot more than I think it normally would. And here from the beginning I knew she was going to have a metal pin and I had spent a while as I was sketching kind of figuring out what that was going to be and I ended up deciding on this black and white butterfly and I feel like it really contrasts nicely with the rest of the piece where her sweater is so colorful and you know her glasses are a bright color and the leaves are there and then there's this black and white pin and I feel like it just adds enough contrast and kind of relates back to her eyes because it's one of the darkest things on the piece. Here I'm just using a Copic multi-liner to outline her glasses. And then going in with the color pencil, I was going to outline the rest of the piece. Just add a bit more emphasis. But I ended up not doing the whole thing because I feel like I had built up enough um, definition by just using the paints and the colors. So I don't end up doing too, too much lining on this piece. I wanted to make sure because the sweater took up so much of the painting that it was interesting to look at and had enough definition to be correct. As well as the hair. It was feeling kind of flat so I decided to go in with that dark color and just do a shading technique similar to the one I would do with Copics where I'm starting at the darkest point and kind of flicking upward and then blending that out. Unlike Copics though, when it ends, it kind of can end bluntly if you don't really feather your brush and like end on like the point so it actually looks like hair and not just a line. <laughs> the wood itself did tend to help with that a little bit when it was feathering because if you push it one way it's going to feather that way so it just kind of feathered and did a little bit of my work for me. 
I'm really happy that I decided to shade the top of her head and her bangs because I was hesitant at first because I didn't want it to look too round. In the end, I'm really happy. I feel like it adds the volume that that area of the piece needs. So now I'm going to add the metal outline to the butterfly pin using my Daniel Smith Duochrome Lapis Sunlight Watercolor, which you can see me swatch in my Colored Fine Tech video right up there. This paint, when you look at it one way, looks like purpley, and then the other way it looks blue. And I thought that would be a really good choice because it would give us that kind of metal-y glint that it needs, while also kind of fitting in with the blues and greens in the back of the piece. I also decided to add some on her, like for uh, eyeshadow and like there's a little dab of it on her lip to like look like a highlight. I had fun. Now going in with Copics, I'm just enhancing a bit of those shadows and some of the saturation in certain areas. I feel like this any piece with the watercolor Copic technique really comes together when you get that, when you get those nice contrasts in with the Copics, it makes me so happy. Copics watchbook up to the side, of course. I really wanted to make sure I got a lot of definition in and around her eyes, because I really wanted to look like she is staring at you. She means business, like she's chilling in this greenhouse or wherever she is, but do you want to mess with her? She looks pretty serious. I also decided to darken up and add some dimension to her glasses, just because they seemed a little flat compared to everything else which I had now shaded up the wazoo. <laughs> I decided to actually go around with a green, or a, I think that's BG72, Copic, and just outline the leaves, make them stand out a bit more and separate them from those dark shadows I added. Now that I've added some gel pen for highlights, I'm going in with my Prismacolor Premier White Colored Pencil and just adding and blending out some highlights on her face. Adding white on any toned face really makes it stand out, so on this wood it was so much fun to see it really pop. Using it on tan paper is another really fun way to make the most of your white colored pencil and just be like, yeah, look at that highlight, look at it go. I also added some shading with this blue. Where's that purple? It's in the description. Now after deciding that the sweater still didn't have enough dimension, I decided to go in with a yellow ochre Prismacolor pencil and shade each individual stripe at the top and the bottom. It took a long time, but I feel like it really adds more dimension to the piece. And if you can add more dimension, do it. At least for me, right now. It also covered up a little bit of that bleeding that the hair did, so that's good. <laughs> and here is the finished piece. I really hope that you enjoyed seeing the process. I know it was a little bit longer, but if you enjoyed, please give me a big thumbs up and tell all your friends I make cool art. Come and see, and I will see you in the next one, okay?